The situation of our youth today is pathetic, with many taking on a wild character. The Christian teacher, strategically placed by God in the lives of these youths at their age of formation, impression, and foundation laying, is in a vantage position to affect their lives and rescue them from a wild future. This is the burden for the year 2006 Christian Teachers Summit. The summit, which held at New Covenant Church Camp, Ijokodo, Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria, was on the theme, Strange Children, Wild Future, the Christian Teacher on a Rescue Mission. Between 19th and 23rd April 2006, for further inquiry or counsel, contact Living Seed Media, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone number 044 470-824. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings us the word of life. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman, the Agagites, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it please the king and if I have found favor in his sight and the things seem right before the king and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse. I want you to be taking note of a few words. Let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Amedata, the Agatite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Asuerus said to Esther, the queen, and to Mordecai, the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther, the house of Haman. And him they have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hands upon the Jews. Verse 8. Write you also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. When God told Saul, go and wipe off completely all the Amalekites. Don't let any one of them escape. He went. God gave him victory. But he the Bible says he flew at the spoil. He was more excited about the spoil. He was more concerned about what he will get than what he will do for God. And one of the people he spared was Agag. And as he spared Agag, he must have spared his children. And one of those that Saul omitted was this hammer. That's the first thing I would like to say to you. I've been speaking, I've been speaking, but you may not understand that the omission of the teachers in the secondary school, in the primary school, in the university are the troubles of our Israel today. I don't know whether I am overemphasizing it, that the armed robber that you see today 
it was the omission of a teacher somewhere. You hear me? Eh? <laughs> you are not hearing me? Those who go about to rape young girls, they are the omission of a secondary school teacher somewhere, sometime. One of my friends years ago was lamenting about a young man that they went to school together, they slept on the same double bunk for five years together. And this young man used to be called Peter. He was supposed to be a Christian. But when they got to form three, this boy went wayward. And do you know what happened? By the time I was talking with this, my friend, who was a lecturer with me at the time, this Peter that went wayward had become a Muslim and he became the deputy governor of the state where I live. And his policies were very terrible. And each time the name of that man was mentioned either in the news or anyhow, this my friend, this brother was very, very committed to Christ. He would just say, eh! Peter. And I knew the day he went away from FCS. See what he is doing now. Before he became a Muslim, he had married a sister, Christian sister. That one have not stopped suffering up to this moment that I'm talking. And the day the sister organized that I should go to speak to this man in their house. Now he has uh, their tenure of being in government finished. So he's now a private man. I went. He said he wouldn't have time except I can be there for 6 a.m. and uh, between 6 and 6.30. We tried to get there. I thought that it was an open door that day. You know what I discovered? As I was entering the house, he came and met me quite all right. He said, yes, are you Mr. Billy Akoni? I said, yes, I have heard so much about you. I knew that you are very versatile in Bible explanations. And then he said, here you meet uh, my friend, uh, imam, chief imam, something, something, and that man already got ready with all his Quran to argue me out. And this is how this man, who used to be deputy governor, sat in between all of us and he was amusing himself as that imam was, was saying all kind of provocative things. And when I knew that, it was a hopeless discussion because it was him I wanted to see and he quietly organized two of us to, to really deal and fight with one another while he is somewhere taking a cup of tea. I excused myself and left. When I told his friend, I said, this is what your friend did. He said, mm. Those that you see that are reckless today, those that you see that are causing confusion and making decrees, those that are sitting in our legislative houses and you are wondering, are they heartless? They were omissions. 
omissions of a teacher. There were those ones that we could not affect. Some years ago, we had a minister of education who made some policies that was quite evident that he intended to destroy the universities down here. University of Ibadan, University of Ife, they were his targets. He brought out a policy that, you know, a mass pushed out all professors, if anybody had done anything for 30 years, you were flushed out. Or you were compelled either to go to anywhere, anywhere to go and uh, get a job. And when somebody met him and said, what is it? He said, those people thought they can, they can do something against somebody. And I was wondering, is now it was clear that he finished from UI. And before he finished, he had quarrel with some lecturers. And none of them thought he was going to later become the minister of education. Only to come with a stroke of a pen pushed them all out. That was when what you call brain drain started. That was when several professors, several people in UCH, very, very brilliant people that made this place great. That's when they started going to Saudi Arabia. I, I, I was flying with one of them. Uh, he was going to Saudi Arabia, but he had to go through UK. So we sat together. I said, Prof. Oh, he said, well, I'm going for my life. Brilliant people. Because a student was omitted. When Saul omitted Agag, he never expected that one day a grandson of Agag will be putting the entire the entire tribe of Israel on the line. Are you with me at all? One of the things I have been praying that God will impress upon your heart is the fact that the children that you are dealing with today, they look spineless. They look simple. They look as if they don't have something to do tomorrow. But I want to inform you, Idi Ami was once upon a time a primary school student. Was he? Eh? Ah. I want to tell you, all those that brought untold hardship to their land, to their nation, they were once upon a time children, students that were omitted when they had opportunity of being molded, being formed, and being tamed in a direction. But I found that there is one governor of a northern state in Nigeria. When Sharia was on its peak, and the House of Assembly was saying they want to get the state to sign Sharia and do it to the extreme. Nobody could understand why this governor, who is a Muslim, would not agree. His closest advisors were bishops and Christians. And one day he was telling his own story. He said, I couldn't bite the finger that fed me. He was a boarding house student at Gindiri. That missionary school started by the cooking, by the, by the SUM missionaries. He said, they fed me 
they help me, they bless me. They gave me Bible. It's only that they did not make me to become a Christian, but I love them. So it meant then that when several churches were on flame anywhere else, just because this one passed through the hand of some Christian missionaries, he had enough sense to say, wait yet. I must inform you as I've been saying. The future is more important than today. The challenge of crying and mourning and saying, hey, they have spoiled our country. Oh, it does not. That's not the issue. That is quite sentimental, but it does not go anywhere. That's not the matter. God is saying, how long will you mourn for Saul? See, I have finished with that. Rise. Fill your own with oil and go. I have found a king for myself among the sons of Jesse. And I was asking, God said he had found a king. And when they got there, all the big, big, big senior people, they were not the one. They went and brought one small boy who was still a teenager. And heaven said, I have found a king. And for the next maybe 20 years, he will not be anywhere nearing the throne yet. But God has already said, is my king. Are you with me? Could there be kings? How many of you know that or knew of if it was once upon a time a student? Eh? I wanted to know whether you know. Eh? There was a student. Was the the liquid of a balland? I mean, was he a student before? Eh? How I wish their teachers were here to testify how they used to be when they were small children. I put it to you. So when Hama developed an unexplicable hatred for the Jews and will sign a decree that they should be wiped out on one single day. And this decree was sent among the entire realm of that kingdom, 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia up to Africa here. So wherever you find Jews on, on a particular day, do what? slaughter them and they have no right to defend themselves that was what happened and we have been talking about Esther but I started by saying Haman that was now the problem that we are all crying about was only an omission of someone who had an anointing to have finished that battle and he didn't finish it now he has grown big Praise the Lord. But when Esther stood up and began to pray and took responsibility and committed herself and said, if I perish, I perish. For most of the time, the story of Esther for many of us only ends with, if I perish, I perish. But I want to tell you, all men that say, if I perish, I perish, never perished. 
Are you afraid of perishing? Those who chose for the sake of fulfilling the purpose and the call of God on their lives and say, if I perish, I perish. I have not seen one of them actually that perished. The Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego perish. Eh? Did Daniel perish in the, in the den of lion? I'm not hearing you. Did Joseph perish inside the prison? Eh? Did Esther perish? I found that the fear of death has held many of us in bondage and had made us cowards and we are unable to realize our God-given potential. We couldn't fulfill the grace that God had brought us into all because we misjudged the fact that God couldn't plan to kill you and he will be giving you a serious assignment like this. So when Esther stood up and went into that fasting and prayer and took her life by her hand and was going to appear before the king without invitation. And as she said, if the king that day just was in a bad mood and said, who brought you here? That was the end of Esther. But she said, yes, it's better to die than to keep living and hearing bad reports. I must do something about it. Hallelujah. Now, I have told the story up to this. That's not what I want to talk about because that's not where the matter is now. Where is the matter for me? God arose to handle hammer. God has done what? Has arisen to handle hammer. Can I inform you? God has arisen to handle the problem of Nigeria. Yes, God has arisen. I, I have come to realize that indeed concerning the problem in the church, concerning the recklessness on the pulpit, concerning political problems, concerning all those things that look like impossibilities, God has arisen. You might not see what God is doing, but we can see it. I see God already working. I see the Holy Spirit turning things around. Don't mind the rubbles. Don't mind all the shakings and the quakings and all the things that some people are speaking with loud, 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 loud mouths. Who speak at a thing and it comes to pass if it is not the Lord? I don't bother about all those because I know God has a reason to solve the problem of our land. And I want to say to you, this summit, it might appear little in your eyes, but in few years to come, you will remember that I've said to you that this is one of divine strategies that will turn our story around in this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. You might be asking, what can a little man like me do? I want to say, very much. Some of you may be saying, ah, we are not important here. We are not important here. Stop devaluing yourself. God doesn't waste time. If you are not important, he wouldn't be wasting our time here. If you are not crucial, God, who is very strategic, will not be doing what he's doing here. If it is that you have no space in what God wants to do, what will he be doing? Wasting our time here. God doesn't do that. Tell someone that you are quite important in what is about to happen. Somehow, why God has taught us to be humble and to speak little about ourselves 
and we have known that it is not part of our Christian life to boast. And some of us have taken humility to an experience to, to, the, to, the, to the point where you think it is humility to have no sense of worth. Some of us think it is humility not to recognize the cruciality of our existence in divine purpose. But I remember when they came and confronted Nehemiah. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know what he said? Tell them, I am doing what? A great work. He said, ah, was he boasting? No. He was only telling the truth. He was doing a great work. Without making mouth, God has positioned us, positioned me and you in a very crucial place. We are crucial to Nigeria. We are crucial to what is about to happen. The future, God is permitting us. Oh, I could see God placing the future of Nigeria in our little hands and say, mold it. Determine what you want it to be. Now, I must go on quickly so that I can finish as I plan to do this night. Hallelujah. Please, with me. Are you with me? For the first time, Mordecai, that had been a megad. Hey, hallelujah. Look at a man. A great man indeed. A man who donated, or what do I say, who contributed the queen of the kingdom. Are you hearing me? That girl was an orphan. Lost father, lost mother. What do you think that girl should have been? Eh? Should have been a prostitute. I met several sisters, several young girls. I said, well, you know, because my father died and because my mother had nobody to help, and you see, that's why I had to give out myself. But here was a Mordecai who has a vision of what a small child can become. You can't be a teacher if you don't see beyond the baby in your student. You won't do what we are telling you to do if only you only see you only see students. You don't see what they are ordained to become tomorrow. Mordecai could put a queen in the palace and he still remained a mega. And he told that girl, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody who you are. Don't tell anybody my relationship with you. I am satisfied to be at the gates. He could foil a coup. And nobody, nobody respected him for that. And he didn't bother because that's not the issue. He was doing something that will become crucial tomorrow. Teachers, teachers, are you hearing me? Teachers, in our calling, and I want to tell you now, in our calling as teachers, we are not called to do things for today. They mistakenly, mistakenly said the reward of the teacher is in heaven. But what they wanted to say is that the teacher is the man who labors not for what he can eat and consume today. The teacher is the one that sets the agenda for the future. Please help me tell someone, you are in position to set the agenda for the future. So God brought Mordecai to the limelight. 
And the Bible said, the king brought his ring, which he had taken from Haman. He gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. I don't want to spend my time on that. I want to go. But Esther, a great intercessor that she has become, even though Haman is now dead, but the decrees that Amma has already put in on ground will continue to speak. Now that's where I am concerned. Let me tell you, if, if, like I told you in the morning, I'm still saying it, if the problem that is serious is about these big, big people that are embezzling money and taking money away and all of that, I'd like to say to you, there's no problem. They will soon go. They will soon go. And some of them will go in such a foolish way that nobody may be available to bury them. No, 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 no. I am not, I, I'm, you see, it's not a matter of prayer. That is the truth. That's not the issue. Every man you see on position, they are on tenure. There's no man that has endless tenure. If they don't voluntarily come down, death will push them out. So that's no problem. That's no problem. But the matter that I saw Esther wanting to deal with is that Haman has died, but the decree he has left will continue to speak. We must deal with it. If the future is not already being mortgaged by the kind of students, the kind of children, the kind of people that we are raising, we will not have talked. We will not have talked. We will not have talked. But because certain things have been written, and written not just on paper, had been written on lives. Children have been taught how to cheat. They've learned to cheat right from nursery and daycare. It's been written. It's part of their life. Prof, you were telling us a story this afternoon, isn't it? That a man... Tell us the story again because it's better to tell it from your own mouth direct. Uh, a father and a child came to our admission at the faculty of pharmacy, the OAU. And uh, the, guy, the boy scored 254. The cutoff was 264. And when he saw the mark, he said, oh, you didn't make the cutoff. And the boy looked straight to the face of the father. I said, ah, ah, but you said you paid for the cutoff mark. Do you understand the implication of that? The boy was surprised. The boy was embarrassed and said, what do you mean, sir? Dad, I thought you said you have paid for cut of mark. Why do you bring me here to embarrass me? As far as he is concerned, he didn't think it is bad. He didn't think it's something he could whisper and say, Dad, I thought, I thought you said you said it. No. He thought it was normal. That's a generation. They believe that all you need to do is to collect, I mean, pay, pay your way for everything. Pay your way for everything. If it is hammer, 
armor is dead. But the armor has written a decree. And even though he died, it will continue to speak. Can you imagine how many people rejoice the day that suddenly we heard over the news that Abacha died? Did you see how people rejoice and say, yeah, praise God. Did that change anything for us? Eh? The issue is not Abacha. The issue is that they have entrenched a way of life which you will be meeting everywhere. You are carrying your file from a clerk to another place and the money is saying, uh, you see, the, the, the file needs transport. You meet the, vigil the vigilante boys who the community are saying that they are better than police. When you get there, they say, touch light, sir, touch light, touch light. And that battery, that, that they need battery inside touch light. <laughs> now, there's something that is written. And now, Esther knew that we can't rejoice that Haman died. So she began to cry again. And what was her cry? Put away the mischief of Haman, the Agatite. And his device that he has devised against the Jews. The king was ready to do whatever she requested. So the king held out the golden scepter to her and said, Esther, what is your request? And somehow, I've sensed very deeply that heaven is holding out the scepter to us. Heaven is saying, if you are ready to make a request, make it. Make it. I'm so excited about what is about to happen. When three years back, the Lord confronted us and said, if Joshua had given them rest, we would not have spoken of another day. And I said, ah, uh -uh. So it meant that Joshua should have carried them to the place of rest. God said, yes, but he didn't. His omission has become another man's mission. And I felt God is saying, I'm holding out the golden scepter to the teachers. I want to give you an opportunity to see what can happen. The kind of revival that will come again when you will arise. The Bible said. So Esther made a request. If I found favor in your sight. And if the things seem right before the king. And I be pleasing in his eyes. Let it be written to reverse. Did you see the word what? Reverse. What we are looking at now is how to reverse. What has taken place. How can we reverse? Can we go back to what we used to know? That you don't have to push your fire before it gets to where it should go. Can we ever get that again? Some of us, when we were admitted to the university, our letter came to the house. And uh, Dennis, what kind of post office did you have in your village that time? Is it not uh, Ushongo PA, Boko PO? Yes, we were all using postal agents, agency, PA. And our letter arrived at PA. And it came on time. And in the letter, your hall of residence was specified. The date of admission and everything was specified. My father, my mother didn't know how to read. 
So they couldn't even follow me to say we are settling you in school. I came by myself. Everything was set. They brought the list. My name was there, number 21 or something. Oh, yes. Is that your name? I said, yes, sir. Okay. You are in uh, Melanby Hall. Yes. Room so and so. Yes. Uh, carry your disc. And this water is going to help you. Everything was there. I didn't know how to give anybody a cup. Of. It didn't even arise. It didn't occur to us. It was a Nigeria before. Are you hearing me? And someone said, ah, ah, did it happen? It happened in our own eyes. And it is human beings from the same villages where we have come from that did it. How did this thing change? Haman did something. Haman wrote something. And it has worked. And gradually, gradually, it looked as if there was never a righteousness in this country before. It has happened now that it looks as if if you don't go and see somebody, nothing will happen. It has, that's not how it used to be. It was something that somebody wrote. And it can be reversed. It can be reversed. It will be reversed. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because, and I like to inform you very quickly before I go on. Every child that is born, that is born, and is coming out. He didn't know about that before. You hear me? He didn't know about it. They were also waiting. They were also teachers. Teachers appointed by Hammer. Eh? Say as soon as this child begins to be sensitive to any form of teaching. Before the teachers of the kingdom of God will arrive, get him. So I want you to know what is happening in the primary school is not inborn. Amen. What is inborn, which is sin, we have the answer to deal with it by bringing men to be born again. Am I? Am I correct? Much more than that, we also have the instrumentality that God has placed in our hands to bring men unto righteousness. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for doing what? For changing men and making them ready for heaven. So I want you to know that somebody wrote what we are seeing now. Some of us, we didn't meet it. And we were already matured before we started seeing it happen. And if anybody says, it can never happen, it can never happen, don't say that. It's because you are too young. It has happened before. It's an interruption. And God is going to uproot it in the name of Jesus Christ. So what is it that is the critical matter for me? And as this woman was crying, she made beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, plea. It was very strong. How can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? How can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? How can I endure? Good prayer. But that's not the matter. The king, Asuerus, said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai, 
listen now. And that's where I just, you know, all this thing I've been doing is preambles. This is where I wanted to come. <laughs> And but you see, if I did not carry you to this point, it will be too sudden. So permit me now. This is where I'm coming. I have just arrived. Don't say, ah, if you have just arrived, we will not go home tonight. You will soon go. By the grace of God, you will soon live here now. Now, he said, behold. And as I was reading that, I seemed to hear God speaking directly to me behold I have given Esther the house of Haman I'm hearing God say behold I have given to you the land I have given to you what are the determinants of the nation. I have given to you. And I think it was a Catholic priest. That was quoted saying. Give me a child. For the first five years. Of his life. I will make him. A Catholic. For the rest of his life. They know what they are doing. They understand. So when I'm hearing God say, Behold, I have given unto you, I have given to you the house of Haman. Him they have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hand upon the Jews. So the next thing that the king said to Esther was my own challenge. Do you know what he said? right you also for the Jews did you you, you do understand somebody wrote before who wrote before hammer and it was happening it was happening we are all crying <laughs> I cannot endure. I cannot endure. The truth is that they will die. You will see all this thing that Hammer has written. If you don't write your own, it will continue. If nobody stands up to rewrite it, oh, that's how it will be. And I said to you, it was not like that before. It was an interruption. Which means it can be reversed. It was because we omitted something. That's why Haman escaped and all that he wrote. So God said, write you also for the Jews as it liked you. I said, Lord, this is an unlimited opportunity. That's what I hear God say. God said to me, write you also for the Jews. Write. Use my name. Seal it with my ring. You also write. Stop money about what Haman wrote. You write your own. You also write for the Jews as it like it to you. I suddenly discover God saying, Look, the issue is not, oh, they are spoiled Nigeria, they are spoiled this. Who are the they? They don't used to be here before, they just wrote. Now, Behold, I have given to you the house of Haman. Write also, you, you also do what? Write for the Jews. Write what you want as it like it you. And I, I suddenly felt we have come to a crucial point in the purpose of God. 
I'm sensing that this teacher's summit is a beginning of something. I am longing and believing that there will arise among you those who will catch the vision of mobilizing teachers, Christian teachers to see that they are with a pen and they can write. They can write even for the body of Christ. For righteousness. For the kingdom of God. As it like it you. When our sister was talking about. 120 students in the class. You know on one side. We will say ah it's a problem. Oh it's a problem. Oh it's a problem. Oh it's a problem. Do you see unlimited opportunity? Which uh, inspector of education is coming to check you in that place? Who told you not to do what you want to do? To write you also as it pleases you, as it liketh you. Write. Do you know that in that village, if you said all oh, the children, because we want God to open our brain very well, we want to meet 6 a.m. What will happen to those children? They say, Tisha, Tisha said we should come for 6 a.m. They will be there. If it is clear in our minds what we can do, to write, he said, you also. Forget about what others have written. Write your own. Write your own. What God is saying to me is this. Stop crying about what others have done. Do your own. Write your own also. Set the agenda. Let it be the devil that will be running up and down and say, ah, look at what Brother Billy is already doing now. Whoa, 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 how do we counteract what he does? Let it, let the devil be the one that is running around how to counteract what I am also doing. That's what I'm hearing God say. Right, you also. Once they put the word, you also, I say, ah, you also write your own. As it like it to you. Unlimited opportunity. If you decide, are you hearing me? To give attention to ministry to students. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know I'm excited. Because in 1976, somebody among teachers in my, in my school where I'm a teacher, leaked my exam to get friends. So you know when you say, ah, I had too many, I just laughed. Because I taught nine arms in mathematics. And we must teach mathematics five times a week, nine arms. And each of the class, 48, 50. I must mark assignment. I must give exercise. I must do that. But you know what, what excited me was that? That opportunity to meet. I said, it means any student that passed through this college, by all means, will do mathematics so he will pass through me. So you are in trouble. <laughs> you will fall into my trap. So, and because when I set this exam, I had to beg teachers, fellow teachers, to help me invigilate. And they went, and they were writing my mathematics for their girlfriends. 
And some of the young boys in the class who saw it, they said, we know Mr. Akane will not agree. So immediately the exam finished, they rushed to the class I, you know, one I that I was uh, <laughs> in They said, sir, something has happened, sir. Something has happened, sir. I said, what is it? He said, Mr. So-and-so and Mr. So-and-so, they were showing, the, they were writing something for Musili. They are writing for this one. They are writing for that one. I said, eh? I said, keep quiet. I will know it. So I quickly marked girls that I expected. You see, before I set my exam, I already know what you will score. Uh, if you are a good teacher, you will know. It's not that day of assessment that you will, anybody can surprise a teacher. No, I know. Those students that I know that no matter how they try, they will get 20%. They were getting 65. Ah, ah. I checked this, I checked this, I said, huh? This is a surprise. So I went and told the, the principal or the HM, I said, sir, uh, I perceive that Mr. So and so and so and so and so, they have done something in my exam and I'm not going to take it kindly. The man said, No, don't cause a problem, you know. That's, I said, No, I'm not causing any problem. But that thing has to stop in this college. He said, How will you do? I said, Don't worry. But I'm announcing to all the students that by tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., they are rewriting mathematics. How will you do it as I'm setting another one? I'm typing. You know, I wasn't a typist, but because I need to know how to type, I started learning how to type. So when I set this exam, I made it in such a way that the best student I used to score 85, 87, if he tries, he will get 60. I already decided that when they have gone through it, I will now add 20 to everybody. So when the exam came, oh, everybody was sweating. I didn't worry. I called the same teachers of yesterday. I said, please, you know, the exam yesterday had a problem. Some students were cheating the exam, and I wanted to correct it. Can you still help me invigilate? I still sent them back. None of them could touch the exam. So when the exam finished, I gathered the whole students. They all sat in the assembly hall. I began to tell them. Tell us, I said, don't the exam students normally repent. <laughs> so as I spoke the word of God to these children, oh, and those children, you thought they were tough. At all, when teachers are teaching them the word of God. It's because you've not tried it. Are you hearing me? You've not done it. That's the problem. So as I stood up, I taught them, I taught them, many of them began to cry. They said they have cheated us. That's what they do. And this one, they cried. I said, now you will give your life to Christ. Several of them repented. I now said to them, as you are going now, the things I used to do, I do them no more. I taught them. You see, you must know how to use simple, simple songs to convey your idea. Stop speaking big, 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 big English. Compose little, little song. The things I used to do, oh, I do them no more. The boys I used to keep, oh, I keep them no more. The girls I used to keep, eh, I keep them no more. That is a great, and you, you make it simple. Boys I used to keep, oh, I keep them no more. The girls I used to keep, eh, I keep them no more. Make it nice. So as they were going home, the boys I used to keep, oh, I keep them no more. The boys I used to keep, yeah, I keep them no more. So, you know, when some of the boys are looking at them and say, the boys I used to keep, oh, I keep them no more. You know, you know, something began to happen in the school. I now said, but you know, there are some of these people who are teachers who only want to use you to rough weather. They will call you. They are not going to marry you. 
They want to spoil your life, rough, use you to rough weather, and after that, you will be gone. Said they may likely call you. When anybody calls you, open to him. Say, excuse me, sir. Let us turn to Psalm 119, verse 162. Say, what is there? Depart from me, O wicked man, for I will obey the law of the Lord my God. Look, it's because you don't know children. It's because you don't know that anything you tell children, they will do it. Hey. So, some of these men, teachers, we used to be meeting in staff room now. They said, uh, excuse me, excuse me. That one would, you know, they are fond of touching the breasts of small, small girls. So, as I said, excuse me. Psalm 119 verse 162 said, Depart from me, O wicked man. I will obey the law of my God. You, you mean, I'm, I, are you saying I'm wicked? I don't know whether you are wicked or not. Depart from me, O wicked man. <laughs> Do you know the next week, we came to the staff room. There was a very hot argument in the staff room. They said, you see, there's a problem in this college. The students are becoming unruly. They're, they're just insulting people. We were in the staff room. So I said, students, they are insulting teachers. Do you know them because I'm going to discipline those students here? I said, what is the matter? Imagine a student saying, depart from me, oh wicked man, oh wicked man. I said, excuse me, sir, HM, can you please ask Mr. So-and-so, what did he say to that girl before the girl began to say, oh wicked man? Then we are not talking about that. We are not talking about preaching here. Since you started this thing now, you, you, the children are no more available to people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, that school changed. I can count on my fingertips several of those students that were affected from that day who are now pastors and ministers of the gospel. Some have become engineers and they are still preaching the word of God. It's such a joyful thing. I went for a burial the other day in Jebujesha uh, and I met one of those, my old student that I taught and she's still standing for the Lord. And they said, look, in the whole family, she's different. Since that time, she has never changed. I asked her, I said, Ebon, are you still standing? He said, sir, yes. Yes. I've decided to follow Jesus. She's married. She's married with her husband, and they are doing the work of God. Now, that is it. You write yourself your own also. Write you also for the Jews. Nobody stops you. I want to tell you what they will stop. If you are using the class period, are you hearing me? To speak in tongues. And Jesus did not teach us that. Did he teach us that? Eh? If you make your class interesting, children will stay. You said, we are closing today at 1.30 or something. I want all of you that uh, will be meeting and studying, I want you to wait behind. We will meet for an hour. And because you know that hunger will trouble them at that time, it doesn't cost anything. I'm still reminding you. A, cab, a packet of carbon biscuit doesn't cost anything. Eh? Oh, does it cost anything? Nothing. Cabin biscuit with zobo. 
You know what I'm calling Zobo drink? Ishakwa, Ishakwa, Ishakwa new. Ordinary Ishakwa. Boil Ishakwa like this and put some little sugar there. You will find that it's a good drink. It's like black currant. Get the children to drink it. Even those that didn't want to hear the gospel, they will wait behind for two pieces of cabin biscuit and a sachet of Zobo drink and you will have got their soul for Christ. What are you talking about? You also write your own. Did you hear me? Write your own. Every time new students are coming in, new students, those of you that are teaching in colleges of education and all of this, this JJC, you don't know that when they are entering like this, they are strange. They are looking for identity. They are looking for anybody that will help them. I could still remember when I first came to UI, I was just roaming around not knowing where I'm going. And I met a brother who said, I think you are JJC. Even the way you are walking, it means you don't know anything. I said, yes, I don't know anything. He said, next week is your matriculation. I said, yes. Have you got a, a, a suit to wear? I said, no, I know. I don't get any suit to because I'm coming from the village. He said, come, make I give you a suit. And as he gave me a suit, I dressed up. I was also going for... <laughs> so, could I forget him? I said, excuse me, where is your room? He said, they used to have a fellowship. He's the one that introduced me to IVCU. I didn't know that there's any IVCU. Only when I got there, I discovered that it was the uh, general secretary. I said, eh, hey, Brad John, are you the one? That's all. How could I leave that kind of person? Eh? How could you be in a school and you are not understanding opportunities to write your own also? I've been asking you, what does it cost to do a squash party for JJC? You don't need to say how to be a Christian. Say how to navigate your way through this university. <laughs> eh? How to navigate your way through the university. Is there any university student that would not like to come to know how to navigate his way? Everybody will come. They will come. They will come. They will come. Put some little, little things and then by the time they are settled, come and hit it. Bam! Before they know it, they will have come out like this. And as you draw, you draw, you draw, you draw, you have brought them. Before they wake up, they have repented. You understand what I'm talking about? Eh? You also do what? Write your own. As it liketh you. The youth is a blank check. What they become tomorrow is what the teacher writes there. Are you hearing me? That boy in Form 1. There's no problem with him. He has come empty. Whatever you tell him, he will do. If you tell him that if you want to be a superman, put your head on the ground and be doing like this, he will do it. He will do anything. It's because you didn't write your own. That's when others have written their own and you are now coming. They say, this boy is very rough. Write your own. Are you hearing me? The Holy Spirit says, do what? Write you also for the Jews. Write you also. Don't let it be the court boys that will write their own first. Write your own also. And it was interesting. That why the king was not struggling with what Haman wrote. He only gave Esther and Mordecai the opportunity to do what? 
to write also for the Jews. And they wrote. And the beauty of it is that they wrote and wrote and wrote. And the king's ring was there to seal it. The king's name was there to, to push it. And I said, Lord, what an un un unlimited opportunity to make a difference. Tonight, as I ask you to join me in prayer, what a privilege to be a teacher. What a privilege to face the young people. What a privilege to be the first one to tell a story to a child. I was going to suggest to you, when it comes to time, teachers, when we were reading, uh, what were those books we read then when we were in primary school? We were reading Abdul. Eh? Abdul went to prison because he sold the uh, ashes instead of sugar. Do you remember Abdul? <laughs> eh? Oh, it's Ali you read. Oh, you see that now. <laughs> Thank you for that. But you know, I'm asking you, what is the big deal about Abdul that sold, uh, that went to prison because he sold ashes instead of sugar? They just want to teach sentence construction. Eh? They want to use the word because. When I started teaching, I started querying all those Abdul and all those, the story of cowries. Why could I not construct my own story from the Bible? Eh? Peter sank into the sea because he looked away from Jesus. Have I constructed a correct sentence with because? Eh? Will anybody take you to prison for writing Peter went down into the sea and sank because he looked away from Jesus? Is a sentence. The subject, the predicate, the verb, the conjunction, the clause, everything is there. Then somebody will ask in the class, excuse me, how can somebody walk on water? Uh -huh. <laughs> he has entered my trap now. So, oh, you see, we don't have time now, but I will tell you that story. I will tell you that story. Actually, in fact, it's something that is serious. To walk on water without sinking. And there was no bridge. He walked on water. But Peter sank into the sea. Because he looked away from Jesus. Excuse me. What is the predicate of that sentence? Uh -huh. We are finished. So when they are going to give example of because. In their exams. What do you think they will put? Peter sank into water because he looked away from Jesus. Will anybody mark them wrong? But then at the end of the class someone said, but how could he walk in, on water? Then you start explaining. Before you know it, he said, you mean that there are difficult situations that if I'm also looking unto Jesus, I can walk over them? Yes. In fact, you will walk over them if you give your life to Jesus now. Sir, how can I give my life to Jesus? He's ready. Write your own. What did we say? Write your own. You can construct your own lesson notes and fill it with the truth of the word of God. Write your own. I don't know who told you not to write your own. Haman wrote his own. Write your own. Can we write our own? Can we decide that God, since you are giving me young people, 
influenceable, adaptable, flexible. They're still looking for identity. They're looking for meaning in life. And I have the opportunity to set the agenda for their lives. Lord, I will do it. That's why we are stopping for tonight. When you live here, God said, Behold, I have given to you the house of Hamar. As far as I'm hearing God say, Behold, I've given to you Nigeria. Because those children, they are the Nigeria of tomorrow. They are the leaders of tomorrow. They are going to be the decision makers of tomorrow. I have given them to you. Write your own. Will you take this seriously? Eh? Will you pray and say, Father, with the privilege you are giving me, with the opportunity to influence lives that you are giving me, and giving me when they are not yet dry fish, Lord, it will not pass me by. Join me as we pray together tonight. Lord, it will not pass me by. Lift up your heart. Lift up your spirit to God. Teach us. Behold, I have given the house of Haman to you. I have given you the secret. I have given you what is making this country to run into trouble. I have given it to you now. Write you also. Write you also. Write your own also. Write your own also. Use my name. God has lent you his name. God has lent you his authority. And when you pray, things will happen. When you lay your hands, things will happen. When you believe God, things will happen. When you speak to God, things will happen. When you cry to heaven, things will happen. Write you also for the Jews. Shall we write also for the Jews? We can produce virgins right now. We can produce girls that will be virgins in this present day Nigeria. It depends on what you write. We can produce young boys that are, that are brilliant. They are, they are forward looking and yet they have not spoiled their lives. Write you also for the Jews. Stop worrying yourself about what others have written. Write your own. 